of the Treasury Department has just responded to House Democrats, their demand uh, to see the president's tax returns. Let's go to CNN's Lauren Fox. Uh, Lauren, what are you hearing? Well, we just heard from Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin that he will not fulfill that request for six years of the president's business and personal tax returns. That request coming from House Ways and Means Committee Chairman Richard Neal, who had requested this information using an IRS section known as 6103 that he said gave his committee the power to ask for this information. This is, of course, breaking news and escalating this fight for the president's personal and business tax return information. Now, Richard Neal has a few options. He can basically sue, go right ahead and say that the Treasury Department is not fulfilling their legal obligation for this information, or he could file a subpoena on top of that and then go to court that way. So those are a couple of the options we have not heard yet from Richard Neal, this request being denied just moments ago. Wolf? And this, it's not a surprise, Lauren. Uh, we never anticipated that uh, Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, uh, would go ahead and do this. Uh, so I assume the Democrats, Richard Neal and the House Ways and Means Committee and other Democratic leaders, including the Speaker, they have a game plan in, in, in mind to take immediate action. Well, absolutely, Wolf. You know, from the very beginning, Richard Neal has been clear that he's been building and preparing for a court case. He never expected this to come easily. Back when I interviewed him in November, he said that this was all about going slowly, being careful, being deliberate, making sure that all the ducks were in line for when the inevitable court case came to be. And obviously, it seems like we're moving forward with that sooner than later. Wolf. All right, Lauren Fox, good reporting. Thank you very much. Let's get some reaction. All right, Chris Eliza, I suspect uh, you're stunned by this news. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Good thing I said what I said three minutes ago, Wolf, because I would have really fallen over. That would have been bad. Yeah, th this is not surprising. Mick Mulvaney, the White House Chief of Staff, has said this. Donald Trump has said this. Steve Mnuchin has said as much previously, which is they believe this to be a political request to embarrass the president politically, and therefore they feel as though they do not need to comply. Now, this is going to be, as Lauren noted, this is going to be a legal fight over what the word shall means, because in the IRS statute, it says that if the Ways and Means Committee chairman requests from the IRS uh, a tax return, the treasurer, Treasury Secretary shall furnish it. Now, We'll see. But that's the fight to come. Donald Trump, from the start, let's let just step one step back, Wolf. Only major presidential candidate since Watergate not to release any of his tax returns. Only president since time in memoriam, since we started doing this, to not release any of his tax returns. He is unique in this regard. He has basically made a calculation, I think he did it a while back, that it was more damaging for him politically for those returns, even a little bit of them to come out, then the hit he would take for a lack of transparency for them not coming out. But make no mistake, this is a legal fight that I do think is going to move up the court system. I don't know how quickly, but it's hard for me to imagine that it doesn't get appealed up, up, up all the way to the Supreme Court because Donald Trump is not giving in he is not suddenly going to turn his taxes over after three plus years of stonewalling. That's correct. Uh, Biana, what do you think? Well, that A, buys the president more time, and B, given the number of judges that he has been able to appoint in federal court judges, and even the, the balance now on the Supreme Court, one could argue that the president feels that uh, he has the court system on his side or in his favor. So uh, that could be another one of his tactics, not to mention the Treasury is also now immersed in the China trade negotiations, which, you know, one minute it looks like it's going well, the other it does not, and over the past few minutes, we We've gotten word that it has stalled once again and uh, that the Treasury Secretary and Bob Lighthizer now say that they are expecting to raise tariffs come Friday. So you've got an economic and financial uh, crisis potentially in the works now that is generating a lot more attention on that than, than perhaps uh, the president's tax returns, at least right now. You got several national security issues uh, at potentially at crisis point right now as well. Susan Hennessy, this this could drag on in the courts for a long time. Yeah, and I think that's the entire play here. This is a this is essentially a stall tactic. It's not a genuine legal dispute. There's not a big open question over what the meaning of the word shall is. Uh, the intention here really is attempting to run the clock such that the president does not have to turn his tax returns over to Congress prior than the 2020 election. And so that really is the, the game here and the gamble here. Uh, it, has, it has nothing to do with the underlying legal arguments. Those just couldn't be clearer. The law is 
really, really strongly, unambiguously on Congress's side. But even if the law is on their side, there is going to be a lengthy process and a process that may well push past the next election. April, why do you think the president, you cover the White House, uh, is so reluctant to let the uh, American public see his tax returns? It's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> you have so many people saying, Wolf, that this president uh, has inflated a lot of things, not just the economy numbers, but his own numbers. Uh, this president, if he didn't give it uh, his tax information uh, when he was running for president, he was not going to give it as president. There's no law saying that he had to, but you know you have people in Congress working on changing that. But here's the problem. The, it all is about the money trail. And he doesn't want you knowing where his money is, how much money he has, or how much money he does not have. Um, he has played this game for too long, and he's going to continue it unless he is forced to. And even if he's forced to, he will drag it out until after he's president, if it happens at that time even. He, he keeps arguing, uh, Biana, that he, he can't release his tax returns because uh, the IRS still has an audit. Uh, they're still auditing his tax returns. When the audit is finished, maybe he'll do it. What do you make of that argument? It's the longest audit in uh, modern history, I would argue. Uh, look, I, I tend to agree with April. I think this president has seen that he's been able to win uh, office uh, by not well, without having to release his tax returns. So why do so now? It's um, a stalling tactic, that's for sure. And you can imagine that if Bob Mueller does testify, that he will be asked the question. Now, I can't imagine that he would answer it or give much detail. But one has speculated, many have speculated over the past couple of years that throughout this investigation, he may in fact have had access to the president's tax return. So that could maybe be another reason why the president uh, does not want him to go before Congress. And what, Wolf, just, yeah, go to, just to be really clear here, there's no law that says a president of the United States can't release his tax returns under audit, which I'm with Biana. This is one heck of a long audit. But, but the, Richard Nixon did this in 1973 to prove the I'm not a crook thing. He released his tax returns while under audit. There, there, there's absolutely no law that allows this and rem that, that bans it. And remember, we've heard a lot of reasons. One is I'm under audit. One is ah, my, my tax returns are so complex. You and members of Congress, you average person, members of Congress, you couldn't possibly understand it. And then the one we heard from Kellyanne Conway, which is all of this was settled in the 2016 election. People didn't care about it, which there's no question on the exit poll that judges what happened in the 2016 election that deals with Donald Trump's taxes. So the conclusion that he won and therefore no one cares about his tax returns anymore, you, you could say, well, no one cares about anything negative about Donald Trump because he won. That doesn't justify this. So there's a changing explanation over time that just gets back to he doesn't want to do it because there's something in there that's either to April's point embarrassing or potentially problematic as it relates to who he owes and how much. And the, uh, go ahead. I, I don't think we should underestimate the shift in political optics either. Previously, the president was just passively refusing to release them. Now we're going to see the president actively litigating using the full strength of the executive branch of the government in order to prevent those tax returns from coming out, which really, really raises the perception that this is not just about him not complying with a norm. This is about the president actively attempting to hide something that he's afraid of the American people exactly. finding out. And, yeah. and, and, and what worked for the president perhaps in 2016 was his opponent. Though we had seen her tax returns, though uh, Hillary Clinton had been a lot more forthcoming, the president was able to paint her in this sort of, you know, she's crooked, she's this, she's that. So that deflected away from the president's own finances. It will be interesting to see who, is, who his opponent is going to be in 2020.